In today's video, I'm going to show you all of the remnants of the Vancouver streetcar that are hidden in plain sight in our city. You can come here to the Burnaby Village Museum and see a beautifully restored streetcar, the interurban car that ran from Vancouver to New Westminster, or this fully restored original streetcar station. But there's more hidden around the city of Vancouver in your day-to-day -day life that I'm gonna show you in this video. So grab a seat because these are the streetcars of Vancouver and this is Downey Live. And this is the downtown Vancouver streetcar depot. Today we're gonna follow the Burnaby Lake Line as it comes out of this depot, goes through Burnaby all the way to the New Westminster Depot, thanks to the City of Vancouver archives with this footage from the 1950s. Now the company that ran the streetcars was called the BCER, or the British Columbia Electric Railway, which meant that they were electric, just like today's modern trolley buses that we have, they use overhead power lines. And that meant they needed electricity substations, so this is the downtown substation at Maine and Georgia. Now it's not surprising that it's still standing, but what is surprising is that right next to it, you can see visible streetcar tracks still in the road. Now I always wondered why there was a bit of flat road there that just stopped and went to nowhere while the rest of the road went downhill here. But that was the original Georgia Harris Viaduct built in 1915. This is where the old Georgia Harris Viaduct went from East Van to downtown. In the end, the streetcars never actually used the viaduct. Some say it was because the viaduct wasn't built strong enough to hold the weight of the streetcars. Others said because it would divert traffic from Gastown, which is where the streetcars currently went. Either way, it was eventually taken down in place of the new Georgia and Dunsmuir viaduct in the 1970s. And it still stands here as remnants of the streetcar history that you can still see. Now, while we have this fantastic example behind me here at the Burnaby Village Museum, I do want to point out the difference between a Vancouver streetcar and an interurban car. A Vancouver streetcar is significantly smaller and runs around the city taking passengers stop to stop like a normal bus today, whereas the interurban cars go much further, connecting actual communities. This example here went from Vancouver to Burnaby all the way to New Westminster. It's 50 feet long and runs on freight train tracks, whereas the streetcar runs on a narrower gauge in the city. Now, if you wanna see a real Vancouver streetcar, you can come to the old spaghetti factory in Gastown, where they have a restored streetcar that you can dine inside. Now, the reason this streetcar still exists was because it was spared from being scrapped because it was used for freight for many years. And eventually, you can see on the photos on the outside here is how they got it inside the restaurant. I actually think it's quite beautiful, very well kept, and a great spot to enjoy some dinner. Now back in the early 1900s, they paved the roads with wooden blocks. You can still see them here in some of the streets in Vancouver, like on Dunleavy here between Alexander and Powell. The reason they used wood, well, use what you got. Vancouver was in a really dense forest at the time before it was all built up with homes and houses. So they had tons of wood to use. The problem was there were a lot of horse pulled carriages and wood is really slippery on hooves in the wet. So they couldn't use them on hills. So instead they used cobblestone. Speaking of cobblestone, this is Francis Street and it still has the original cobblestone and you can clearly tell where the streetcar tracks ran. Now the BCER was responsible for the tracks so when they were forced to remove them they just put in cobblestone at a different angle so it would fit. In fact there were two sets, there were one on this side of the road and one on the other side of the road but that side's been paved over. Now the Francis route here really didn't last that long, it wasn't a success because it's only two blocks from Hastings and three blocks from the Venables lines which were much bigger. If you come to check it out yourself, go really slowly if you come in a car. It is brutal on your suspension. The inside of these interurban cars have high ceilings. You can ring the bell if you need your stop. And once the car gets to the end and goes back in the opposite direction, you can flip the seats back. Now it has a non-smoking section and a smoking section here that is separate wood seats. So the smell of the smoke wouldn't seep into them. But what's interesting is in the smoking section, it has these strike pads for your matches so you could light your cigarettes. But do not spit out of the window because that is punishable by imprisonment. So I don't think it's worth it. Now the reason they ordered these cars from the St. Louis Car Company Builders is because they had the stronger dome top as well as a single 40 foot long steel panel down the side. No separators, this is a single piece of steel. And the benefit of that was safety because at the Lakeview station, there was the worst traffic accident in Vancouver history. So this was deemed safer. Okay, we'll get back to the Burnaby Lake Line in a second. We're just going to detour for a moment. Here nearby on the Burnaby Central Park Line is Lakeview Station. 
Now, at the moment, we're in a community garden and it acts as a garden shed, which is really nice. But in fact, it's home to the worst traffic accident in Vancouver history. That's still to current date. You see, there was an accident between an interurban streetcar and a flat car, which is essentially like a flat deck truck nowadays. And when they collided, all that lumber and timber sheared off the top half of the streetcar which killed 14 people on board. And so on the one hand, as it stands as a memorial for those who lost their life, it is also a reminder of how the SkyTrain runs essentially along the same lines that the streetcars laid a century ago. Okay, let's go back to the Burnaby Lake Line. The streetcar goes down the boulevard of First Avenue, and when it gets to Boundary Road, it takes a 45 degree turn to the right, which is now represented by the overhead power lines. Coincidence? I think not. I mean, after all, it was built by the BC Electric Railway. And so under those power lines, right about here at 2nd and Boundary would have been Hornpain Station, which is only interesting because it was named after the president of the BCER. And then it would ride along these tracks until it got to where Highway 1 is today and follow that until it got out to Burnaby. Now this is roughly about where Sprott Station would have been and it's one of the few places that I think actually looks like it used to about a hundred years ago. Just a few houses in the distance, the tracks it would have run along, and the rest is forest. Now the Burnaby Lake Line now runs where the Trans-Canada Highway was. In fact, pretty much right at Canada Way and Highway 1 is where Vorse Station sat. In 1950 the tracks were removed and someone came down with a bunch of horses, hitched up the station to it, pulled it back to their farm and used it as a shed until it was eventually found and restored and brought here. So this isn't just a representation of what a streetcar station used to look like. This is an original streetcar station that's just been restored and brought here. They were pretty simple structures, just a little outdoor seating area and a little indoor seating area. Basically to keep you dry while you're waiting for the tram. Let's keep moving. And with the power of editing, we have arrived in New Westminster at Columbia at 8 at the old streetcar depot. You can see that they drove in through where these windows are here on an angle. In fact, if you look inside, now a Salvation Army, you can see the pillars inside are still on the angle. And it's nice that the building is still here. But of course, that was the end of the line for the streetcar. And in 1958 was the final running of the interurban streetcar. And it began the era of the rails to rubber, which is, of course, when they were replaced by buses. And our driver today is Angus here at the Transit Museum Society. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Look at the interior seats here. We're in a 1964 General Motors diesel new look bus. AKA the fishbowl because it has huge windows including this one at the back here. What was special about this bus, not only the large back windows, the two-tone colors designed to match the outdoor paint job of the bus and this very 1950s styling that I love. Woo! Look at that, still runs incredibly well, Angus. It sure does. Almost 60 years ago, still running. I mean, this is where all the, the high school kids would want to hang out at the very back, looking out, making faces at people. This is where the bus drivers were all sit, going to work or coming home from their shift. Oh, okay. They all take over the back seat. I have to say, the buses, the upholstery, Everything is in such phenomenal shape here. Well, you are right at the front of this bus. You are, absolutely. You can see right down to the roadway. Angus here has brought us to see 15, well, they have 15 historic buses here, but I'm going to show you five that were part of the era of replacing the streetcars. Let's go see. Now, this first bus is probably their rolling museum, if you will. In fact, it has almost the whole history of Translink from back with the BCER and even pre streetcars on board this. You might just be at an event in Vancouver and be able to step on board back in time in this bus. This bus was new in Victoria in 1957 and that's where it ran for many years. And then in 1989, they took out all the seats, they covered over the windows and they made this into a display bus. So really a collection of significant history pieces as well as stories and photos through the generations. So here's 19 48, the first electric trolleys. We go on to the 1980s. The sea bus is introduced. The sky train opens. Do you see fruit? Some of these brands still exist. Yeah. Travel by bus to eat out from the 40s. Carousel 7500 was the phone number for transit information. Wow, the steering wheel. And what's and this? Is there. That's, that's the handbrake? And that's, no, the, oh, that, this is the that's handbrake. handbrake. And the door control handle is that. Ah, yeah. of course. I should know. I've driven a TransLink trolley bus. Yeah. <laughs> this one's a little different than I'm used to. 
Bree Snug. Some impressive park jobs you guys have done in here. You look back at the old streetcars and just think they're beautiful works of art. You know, they're red and gold and wood inside and they're, they're a heritage. And you look at these buses and you go, oh, they're old, they're loud, they're noisy. But at the time, this was the modern technology taking over. True, but these were quiet. <laughs> oh right, this was electric. This one was electric. That's right, that's right. This bus had a very different design called Torselastic. Wow, good suspension. name. The design was good if the bus had a full seated load, mm. but if the bus was lightly loaded, it, it bounced so much. And as a kid, it would go over railway crossings. It could actually lift the back seat out and put it on the floor. Holy. Like these, these things could bounce <laughs> so much. So this is the, I guess the second logo of the BC Electric Railway Company as it became BCE. There's two versions of this. First version is that one over there. Can you see how big the... It's huge. When they started to put those on after the war, from a distance, it looked like an apple with a worm coming out of it. <laughs> so they said, uh-oh, we better change the design. So very shortly thereafter, they went to this one. Now this bus might be my favorite. It's called the Canadian Car. That was the builder of it. And in fact, it's in the BC Hydro colors, as you can see with their new snappy logo and colors, much different than the BC Electric Railway, which changed because once they got rid of their streetcars, they were no longer a railway. But this bus was running in Vancouver while the interurban streetcar was still running to Steveston. Imagine riding the streetcar and it being replaced by one of these buses. Yeah, it looks very... It's roomier. Comfortable seat, very comfortable seat, I have to say. Nice big windows. We don't get this style of window anymore. No. Wow, powerful. And you can tell the difference in the generation from the last bus just by the color of the seats. Look at that. You don't see that anymore. Thanks very much, Angus. Have a good day. Sure will. Great to see you. All right, bye. Okay, okay. bye-bye. Here at the Transit Museum Society. They take fantastic care of these buses. I also want to thank the Burnaby Village Museum for taking care of the streetcars. I hope you enjoyed the history of all the buses, all the streetcar stuff, but it's not over because next week we are following the streetcar line from downtown Vancouver all the way out to Steveston along the interurban line. There's a lot left to see, so figured that needed to fit into a second video. But if you're new to the channel, I'm Mike. It's Vancouver Adventure Videos. The channel is Downey Live. And normally I say I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. But I, I just told you we're going to Steveson next week, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. You can click on the face to subscribe if you're new. And all the behind the scenes, extra bonus video features stuff is all in the members. So if you want to click join, you can see that there. And if not, that's okay. See you next week.